Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners podcast, we're talking about advertising mistakes, some things you probably shouldn't do. Maybe you're doing them, maybe you're not, but either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from WCR. It's windowcleaner.com, window cleaning resource, and you're here. What's up? I'm sorry, you're here. I have to, have to make the, the note. But either way, you're here. What's up? If it's your first time checking us out, definitely go back and watch or listen to all of the episodes. It's available on YouTube, but also anywhere podcasts are available. If you want to find it somewhere and it's not there, tell me and I will make sure that it's there. But it should be everywhere. Either way. But if you're one of the cool kids, that means you do all of the listening and thumbs up on all of the videos, which, by the way, this one, you can go ahead and thumbs up. And you comment, and most importantly, I am your rep for window cleaning supplies. You buy everything through me. What's up? It's because of you that I get some name brand floss. Actually, that was just given to me today by somebody saying that they uh, wanted to put an order in and get me some name brand floss. So there you go. If you want me to put your orders in, that would be absolutely epic. Please do so. Uh, my number is 862 312 2026. That's a sell. So you can call me, text me, whatever you want. I'm here for you. Put your order in. Um, and at the end of the show, I'll give you a 5% code for a discount that you can save some money on if you order through me. Drop my phone. But either way, thanks guys. Uh, again, 862-312-2026. Just put everything in your cart. Be like, yo, Jersey, I got some stuff in my cart, man. Put the order in. Give me the code and uh, that's it. Super simple. Doesn't cost you any extra. And I can buy some name brand floss. So super awesome. But I do want to give some shout outs to a couple awesome people. And uh, yeah. First off, Matt Young. What's up, man? Uh, Larry Allen. Matthew Clebeau. I haven't heard that name in a while, man. Thanks for uh, uh, coming back. Uh, Austin Moore. Thanks for coming to my defense. And most importantly this week, most importantly, I want to say what's up to Logan Thompson, the guy who said he wasn't such a huge fan of me. He's asking for podcasts and he said he's not a fan of me, which is cool. Uh, that's actually like the second time anybody said something negative about me. So what's up, man? Sorry, you're not a fan. It's cool. Uh, I am an acquired taste. I totally get that. Uh, but thanks for Austin Moore coming to my defense saying he's learned a ton. And thanks for everybody else who sends me texts every single day saying that they've gotten something out of it, emails and whatever else. So either way, thank you very much. I just had to give a little uh, uh, ball busting over there to Logan. Hopefully you're watching this episode and I change your mind on everything. I also hope you're having an amazing new year and I hope you're going to hashtag kill 2020 because I know a lot of you are doing the planning. A lot of you are doing everything that you can to plan to have an epic year, man. I've been talking with people all the way through the new year uh, on just what they're planning, what they're planning on doing. I did our uh, meeting here at WCR this morning. It was like two and a half hour long meeting about planning and getting everything. It's crazy. It's pretty awesome. Uh, either way, I hope you're going to kill it this year in 2020. Hopefully, you do better than you did last year or stronger than you did last year. Hopefully, it's just an awesome year. Hopefully, this time next year, you're talking about how amazing it was. So, cool. Comment down below if you have projections of what your projections are. Don't tell me uh, specific dollars unless you want to, but tell me percentages of what you're hoping for growth. I'd love to hear that stuff. Tell me your growth numbers down there. Either way. So, today we're talking about advertising mistakes. Now, every market's different, so this is a tough one. Because if I tell you, don't advertise in the winter, well, sometimes in California that may work. Some places don't have seasons or their seasons are moved. Arizona has what's called haboobs, those are sandstorms. They have monsoon season. A monsoon, se monsoon season comes through. They have a big um, boom of people who need to get everything done before that, but yet they're dead right before it and during it. We don't have a monsoon season in North Carolina or in Wisconsin where I originally was. So it's kind of tough to say what works and what doesn't, but these are some general rules. And please do, if you guys are thinking of anything, comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube. 
Tell me your don'ts or mistakes, things that you've learned the hard way down below. I mean, we, that's how we do the conversation. I love hearing it and seeing comments. So definitely, definitely do that. But here are some that at least I know of and I follow. Uh, and by the way, I've had horror stories just like anybody on advertising where I've done 2,500 pieces, I think was the largest the largest EDDM that I've ever sent that got a 0% ROI. I didn't get one call from it. And I screwed up the timing. I knew that was my problem. I knew it was my problem as soon as I sent it. Uh, season kind of changed and dropped back down. And maybe I had somebody save a card and got it and then just didn't tell me that they got it off a card or what. But track everything you do, by the way. That's another tip. It's not even on any of this. If you are doing estimates over the phone, which I hope you are because they're super fast, super easy, but make sure you ask them how they heard of you. That is the big one. If you ask them how they heard of you, they'll tell you. And from there, that's how you see what's working. So my last question is finally, how'd you hear of us? And then they'll say, oh, I've used you before. Or my neighbor or uh, I got it out of the newspaper or I got an EDD. I'm a postcard or a flyer was hung on my thing that said pardon the glare. And then I just write that down. I calculate and put them all in there and you track and then you see how it works so definitely track that side of it but one of the big mistakes that um, I know of is advertising in the wrong time of the year and that's kind of how we started this episode here talking about that but I know for a fact that in any market I've ever been in there is a off season your off season may be winter most of us it is winter some of us are even in shutdown which is you know, totally cool if that's what you do. But in wintertime, no one wants windows done where I've ever been. Very, very hard. And when I say no one, yes, people always comment. They say, yeah, well, I, I get a couple people that, you know, okay, a couple people does not constitute as a viable number for me to send out advertising. So advertising in these slow times is very, very hard not to do because a lot of us don't have money certain times a year. We're like squirrels. We get it when we can for when we don't. And one of the big things with that is wintertime, especially in Wisconsin market. Um, wintertime hurts. It hurts. Definitely. You do some plowing, but now you're Mother Nature's whipping boy. You got to only work when she lets you work and when she decides to snow. So you want to advertise. You're like, oh, what I wouldn't do for like a good, you know, thousand dollar house or something, right? The problem is, is advertising when somebody's not buying doesn't, if it's not in somebody's brain and it can't motivate them to buy, it doesn't work. It's like if I bought a brand new car last month, brand spanking new, and I see the most awesome ad for another car, I'm not going out to buy another car, no matter how amazing the ad is, no matter how good the deal is, no matter none of that I'm going to do because I already have a car. I'm not in the market. That ad was wasted. That's why no one in their right mind, if somebody bought a car, would then advertise a targeted market towards people who just bought a car. It just doesn't make sense. It's the same kind of concept. If you're in the wintertime or off season, could be any time, and somebody is advertised to, they're not going to buy. They may not be in the market at all for it. And now you've just wasted money on advertising. So it's very tough. If you send something out, you send 2,500 pieces out, but you get one house at 199 bucks that calls you. It doesn't much make sense. No one is advertising to just break even because now there's labor involved, right? So it doesn't make sense to advertise if you're not getting the work. And that's one of them. Off-season advertising just does not work. Don't do it. If it if you found that it some if I'm wrong, please tell me down below in the comments here on YouTube. If you're watching it on YouTube, if you're on a podcast, go to YouTube and tell me I'm wrong. I'd love to hear it. I love to hear stories too, especially ones that uh, go against everything that I think I know or that I've learned. I like to hear it. So tell me, but for the most part, that's a, a hard, hard rule, at least in my businesses. Um, another mistake you can make is advertising to you. Advertising to you, and maybe you're different. I am not my target market. I'm not paying somebody to clean my windows. I never would even if I wasn't a window cleaner, right? I just not something I would ever do. Maybe as I get older in years, maybe. But I'm not my target market. I'm not in the, you know, mindset of that. So anything that I make, I go, wow, that's a really good ad. 
It doesn't matter what I think. I'm not my market. You have to check with your market on what works, right? So here's another thing is if you ever get to a job or bid a job and you're like, oh, man, $3,000 for window cleaning? Oh, man, that's so much money. It's so much money to you, but it's not so much money to somebody who just built a couple million dollar house or a few million dollar uh, commercial property or, you know, who knows what they're doing or what they're into. You're not your market. You're not your target market. Most of us are not. We work with our hands, right? So we're going to, of course, probably clean our windows if we're capable. That's just who we are. So it's very hard to create a piece and then send that piece to yourself because you like it. That's when you get bad results because you're advertising the wrong thing to the wrong people. Now, here's where I get the hate mail. I'm going to tell you. The other thing is, is advertising to the wrong gender. There are specific things in uh, you know, our industry that work well with one versus the other. They're a very targeted ad towards men and women. If you look at a, a, a truck commercial, it's some guy talking like this, driving a truck, and they're riding through mud and pulling horses and just dirty old guy getting out with a cowboy hat. They're and then you watch one that is targeted towards a woman say a minivan commercial or whatever that would be targeted towards that side. There's poppy music. They're always driving on nice, clean, watered down roads. They're in a parking lot with kids screaming and, you know, they're moving things around and they're all happy shopping with their coffee. That's not a guy's commercial. So understanding who you're marketing to is big. Who is your target market? If you haven't done that research, find out. Everybody should have their... Uh, their, their target client, and it should have a name. Clyde. Our target guy is named Clyde. He's between the ages of 43 and 48. He lives with a wife and one and a half kids with two dogs. Like, you could figure out who your target client is by basically sampling all of the, the jobs that you do. So check it out and see who you are, uh, who your target client is. It might surprise you. But I always found that our target's always been women, always. So putting out ads that are something I like, it's not, I'm not even in the gender of the person, much less the target market. So finding out who you're advertising to is big. And another way to do that, other than finding out, which you have to know who your target market is by figuring out who's their ass people. Get, you know, if you're on a job site, write down how many things people have. You're going to start uh, acquiring this fake person and you'll find out who your target market is. I'm telling you, if you have more than not people have dogs, maybe you should make a dog ad because you have a lot of dog lovers, right? If everybody's got dogs and you have three clients a year that have cats, don't do an ad with a cat in the ad. Those people don't like cats. That's why ad companies make a ton of money is because they do the demographics. They also do what's called split testing. Split testing, if you haven't done it, everybody thinks you need to be rich to do split testing and you don't have to do giant marketing uh, campaigns split test. You need to split test everything unless you're buying a template from, say, the WCRA that's already been split tested. But anything you create, you need to split test. And I'm talking about hugely split testing. The point of advertising is to make an ATM. It's to make something that you can put a dollar in and make $10 off, right? That's an ad. If you can make something, your ROI always is 3% off of that. You need to put as much money as possible because if you put a thousand or 10,000 into it, you're still making 3%, right? So you need to figure that out. The only way to figure that out is to find out what do your customers like? What do you get the best response from? And I'm talking split testing the color of the background, the picture, the animal on the front, the offers, the coupons, the expiration dates. You can split test everything. And here's how it works. You don't split test and do 50 different things, send them all out, and then pick one and then do that for the rest of your life. That's not how it works. What you need to do is split test every time you do an ad. A Facebook ad, a you know any kind of ad has to be put out that way. Has to be. It's testing everything. And I'm telling you right now, when you find what works, say you have some split testing, you find out that the blue background actually works better than the red one. 
But on another piece or another thing, you split test dogs and cats. And the dog worked better than the cat. And the next piece, you have coupons with a, you know, one week expiration or a two week expiration. And one you have with a three month expiration. And that one works better than as you start split testing, you're figuring out what's working. Now you make a postcard with a blue background, with a dog, with a two month, two week expiration on the coupon. You keep finding the best things of them and putting them all into one card. Now you're split testing that particular card. As you continue to test it, you will eventually be the master of advertising. That's why these guys are making so much on their ROI. The next one comes over and goes, oh, I just sent something over and I got like a .0008 ROI. Well, that's because you never split tested anything. You can't just take something and go, oh, I like it and think that everybody else is going to, you're not your target market. So split testing is huge. You have to split test, split test everything, everything. It's so worth it to do that too. It's, it's, it's learning who your customer is and what they like allows you to advertise in their language. It's the same thing in sales. If somebody's talking to you, say you talk to John Lee, right? John Lee works here. Uh, John Lee, he's from the South, man. He talks like this when you talk to him. He's just calm. He's calm and he's just, you know, very slow talking, drawn out. Now, if I talk to him and I talk to him super fast like this and I'm, he and I are not communicating correctly. Both of us are going to feel awkward in the connection. But if I slow what I'm saying down a little bit, I'm not making a Southern accent. I'm not mocking anything, but I'm talking to him on a slower level because that's how he is. Then you all of a sudden can communicate way better. And that's just verbal. Imagine when you can communicate with somebody on something that they like. When you get a piece of mail and the picture in the mail is something you like, you'll stop to look at it subliminally, even if you don't even catch what's on there. You know, it's one of those things and that's how ads work. The other nice thing with ads are is the way that you can split test is so fast. I mean, you can do a Facebook ad and do two of them at the same time and you can... Tell within an hour which one's doing better because of how many clicks you got. It's amazing time. It's an amazing time for advertisers. Uh, It's an amazing time for people that don't get spam because they're only getting ads that, you know, you actually are interested in. It's like uh, we were just talking about that this morning. Alexa has to listen to you or somebody. I don't know if it's Facebook or what because you'll talk about trampolines. All of a sudden you got ads for trampolines. It's crazy. I, would, I know people talk about that, but I would rather 100% have ads because you can't get away from them anyway. And I don't need to. I like ads. They're interesting to look at. Interesting to understand the psyche, right? But I would rather look at them that are actually tailored to me than ones that aren't. I don't need to see Mary Kay or something like that. It's just not interesting, right? So finding out your split testing, I can't stress that enough. Split testing, an ad is awesome. And that's why the WCR, this is not a plug for WCRA. Uh, I can't even do the WCRA stuff, but I like their ads is because you can get a postcard that was split tested, super split tested. You're talking about a dozen runs before it became one of those templates. It's awesome. It's awesome. The money makers. Uh, Another uh, mistake that I think that people make a lot of the times is trying to advertise everything that they do. And you see this a lot on wraps, vehicle wraps, right? Let's, Let's break this down. In my company... Uh, that I had, by the way, uh, sold it September 1st. We're done, so I'm not technically a window cleaner, but it's still force of habit. But we did window cleaning, pressure washing, uh, under pressure washing would be house washing, roof cleaning, concrete cleaning. You had um, gutter cleaning, screen repair. You, you got all these things that are popping up, right? I'm not going to write all of those down on the vehicle. Why? Because I do those, they're all connected somehow. They're very, they're close touches. I do window cleaning and house washing because I have to do the house washing before the window cleaning. But if you put all of those down in an ad or on a wrap of vehicle or whatever, you lose people. Absolutely 100% true that more options are bad. Now, from a consumer standpoint, consumer says no. More options are good. I want options. But they don't. A consumer does not want options because if you have too many options, you can't make a decision because there's too much out there. This is why when you see um, packages 
there are three. Three options. There's not 13. It's just that's too many. It doesn't make sense. When you see uh, the McDonald's menu, there's like, you know, there's like 10 different uh, value meals or whatever. I haven't been to McDonald's in a while, but there's not 100 of them. Because you can't make a decision if there's too many choices. And that's the same thing with with items. If you put too much stuff on there, you lose somebody before you get somebody. If I put something down on window cleaning, I usually push window cleaning. Uh, I'll do separate ones for uh, house washing and also do separate ones for roof cleaning because roof cleaning people don't know exists. But I don't ever put the other ads onto that one. I just don't. Because at that point, it just doesn't make any sense to cross-reference stuff that they're not interested in. I want to pull their attention for window cleaning. And then later I can be like, oh, your windows, you know, we bid your windows, but I noticed that your siding is bad. Can we, you know, I'll upsell them on the, on the phone. When they call the book, the appointment, I'll upsell them. There's a lot of times where I'll upsell somebody where they may not know I did the service, but I didn't lose them in the beginning. The other thing with a single service is if you advertise a single service, you're a professional at that service. And we know we're pros at what we do. A jack of all trades is a master of none. We know that, but we do a few different things. But when you see somebody who advertises um, services that aren't connected, so you see the handyman who can build cabinets, but they also pressure wash, they paint, and they pick up dog poop. In your head, well, they're not a pro at any of them. They just kind of can do them. Well, you could do Anybody could do those, right? But when you see somebody who just, all we do are kitchen cabinets, you know that person's going to be doing a lot better of a job because that's all they do. Every day they're practicing their craft, right? It's the same thing with advertising. If you advertise too much, you'll lose people. And you don't show that you're a professional, um, uh, an expert at that one item. So focus more on the single item than trying to do everything. I'm telling you, less is better when it comes to that. Another mistake you can do in advertising in general is putting pictures that don't sell. I.e. big houses. I.e. blurry pictures. I.e. mansions or clubhouses. Or Here's the thing. I don't ever want to see an ad about window cleaning with a mansion on it. You're not bragging to anybody that you do big houses. You're showing people that their house is not as good as that one. Well, they do those big houses. They're not going to want to do my little house. Oh, they only do big places. So t- that big house is nothing like mine. I'm not, I'm not even... I don't want that. I want a regular size little house. Because here's the thing. Somebody with a big house or a big project always knows they have a big house or big project. If I have a 10,000 square foot house, with, with which, by the way, I don't. <laughs> but if I did, I would know it's big. I don't need a picture to show me that it's, I could see a picture of a little house and be like, well, let's see if they can handle mine. Showing the big houses, that's what you can do on Facebook or to your friends. Be like, look at this house. I did this giant house. Look at this thing. That's cool. But it doesn't make sense on ads because it doesn't sell. If you're selling big houses, um, window cleaning the big houses, sure, you may pull those big ones, but you're showing a big house to somebody else who now is in competition with somebody else. I always like to put smaller houses on my ads. Always, always, always. Single story, smaller house. And those houses are a lot more relatable. Making an ad relatable is what we just talked about. Split testing. Speaking someone's language. If I see a little house, a single story house, but I have a two story house, I'll call and be like, hey, I just went around. Do you guys do two stories? Yeah, we do. Oh, good. Okay, you can look at it. That's the question that I have. If you have this big giant mansion with 16 workers all in a picture, that makes great, you know, calendars for the your friend window cleaners, but for somebody else they're like, well, they're not going to want my house. You lose so much business by not speaking their language. It's the same thing when you see ads for fancy things. If you see a Rolex commercial or a Rolex ad, the person is sitting in a Bentley, uh, you know, drinking champagne, uh, maybe not at the same time. <laughs> With their Rolex on and their $4,000 suit. Everything in the picture is tailored to somebody who's buying a Rolex. You buy a Rolex because it's a Rolex. Nobody needs a watch that's that expensive and needs it, right? So you see a lot more ads tailored to that and the whole ad is focused on it. 
okay? So don't, don't go crazy on the pictures, especially ones that don't sell. You need to focus on, that's another thing with split testing. Split testing, I'm telling you, smaller houses work. Uh, another advertising mistake is advertising your equipment. No one cares that you have the newest zero pure system. No one cares that your zero pole happens to be the zero gold with the ultra high modulus carbon. You lose somebody. Now, if you say we use water fed, that means we use no soaps. That is more powerful than advertising the exact equipment. I've had, I've seen pictures of guys who lay all their equipment and their trucks out and they take pictures. Well, that's cool to show everybody else like, wow, man, your business is doing great, but it doesn't make sense to send it to somebody who is choosing your business. They don't care that the brand of your equipment happens to be the highest brand uh, selling brand or that it's the most ex- understanding that something's state of the art as you know the, the term goes or that you use it is something different than advertising the actual equipment itself. Telling somebody you have a capability is much better, much better than advertising a piece of equipment that these people don't care about. Now, we advertise equipment Because we're selling the equipment. You're not selling the equipment, right? You're selling the service. So why advertise the equipment? Makes sense. At least in my head it does. Another uh, advertising mistake is only selling um, on price. And this one's tough because I always, always, always say put your price on there. Because I want to stop tire kickers right away. If I'm selling something and my minimum is $199, I want you to know that my minimum is $199. I'm not selling on price. I don't care that you think my price is high. I don't care that you can buy it somewhere else. I'm just showing you the price so that it kit cuts 50% of the calls out just to question on how much, you know, what the what the total is. And um, now I'm wasting time on somebody who's never going to buy it. So putting your price is different than selling on your price. When you advertise the discount for this, the only thing that can happen is that that's all they're focused on. The selling of why you cost what you cost is a lot harder to uh, easier to lose somebody. It's a lot harder to keep someone's attention. The other thing is, is that if I advertise my window special is ninety nine dollars, and that's the front of my page, well, somebody else goes, ah, it's not that good of a deal. I saw it for eighty nine. Well, they're only focused on the price, and we've talked about price a thousand billion zillion times. I know, but advertising the price as the focus is sucky. And that just does not work very well. And the people that you do get are people who are just price shopping. They're going to leave you for the next person who's a dollar cheaper. But what you can do with a price is explain a service with the price. The experience is why people buy. It's taking away someone's pain point. Spending money is always a pain because I'd rather not spend money. So why advertise another pain point when you can advertise how you're taking away pain point? The experience. You love golf? You can go golfing this weekend and we'll take care of the windows, right? You keep the inside of your house so clean for your new baby, we can keep the outside just as beautiful as the inside, right? As the seasons change, you can see the birds, you can, you know, spend time with your family and we'll take care of the dirty work, right? You're creating an experience. You're helping somebody understand that you're taking away their pain points. If I said... All you need to do is pay us $100. Well, that sucks. I don't want to pay anything. I I don't want to think about the money. I want to think about what I'm getting for the money. That's why people buy things. People buy things. They're trading, trading money because they think that the thing they're getting is more important or valuable to them than the money. That's why they're making a purchase. If you need groceries, it's because you're hungry. Oh, man, I spent a lot of money on groceries. Well, yeah, but guess what? I'm not going to be hungry. People buy a new car. Not because of... Uh, that they need to get from point A to point B, they could buy a cheap car. They buy a new car because of the experience. How does the steering wheel fear, feel? How does the music sound? Oh, it's so quiet in here. It's Nobody ever says, well, this will get me point A to point B. That's why I'm buying this one because there's always a cheaper car. It's creating a, uh, removing the pain point. So don't sell only on price. But the last and final thing, advertising, mistake is that you don't have coupons now i just got done telling you don't advertise on price but i'm telling you to put coupons on the back and that is the clothes right so the whole front's a picture of whatever i have gutter squirrel i got a picture of a clean window i got somebody maybe up on one where you can't see or maybe uh somebody golfing on the front 
whoever your target market is, a picture that de depicts that little bit of information on the back. But then I'm going to have on everything coupons because people eyes that go to those dotted lines of a coupon to see what it costs, where it is, if it's in the realm of their brain, and then they'll read everything else. That's how it works. So I look down, $149, 20 windows outside. Okay, well, that's in my price range. Now they go up and look at everything. That's how it works. Having a coupon creates people thinking that they're getting a deal or discount. So they're going to look at that first. They're going to see the price, and so now the tire kickers are gone. But now they can read everything else and see if they're even interested. The other thing is if you have an expiration date on a coupon, it creates a sense of urgency, and that's when people buy. Creating a sense of urgency. These are just some of the mistakes that I think you can make in advertising. Hopefully you agree. Hopefully you liked this episode and you're not like Logan Thompson who thinks that uh, he's not such a huge fan of me. No, I'm cool, man. I'm just kidding with you. Uh, but if you do need supplies, please do order through me. That's how I make my cheddar. It's like a virtual high five. So give me a call, 862-312-2026. That is my cell. Call me. Um, yeah, text me. Call me. Whatever you want. I want to be your rep, and I want to sell you products that you need and will help your business. But either way, I hope that your 2020 becomes epic. And uh, I hope that you are just going to kill it. So go out there and just be it.